here in just a few minutes with his uh, political stuff. Bill Munn arrives now with Moments in Grant County History. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. I, I had not known it was uh, Johnny Rivers' birthday. Or we would have burst into a chorus of Secret Agent Man. I don't know, have you played that yet this morning? <laughs> no, but I will after you get well, done. How about that? One of my favorites of that is Johnny good. Rivers. Dating yourself. Well, well <laughs> there you have it, Ed. Yeah. Um, you know, I was thinking, too, about... Um, great performances in Marion. I just wonder if any listeners have a favorite artist performance that occurred in Marion, Indiana, that they'd like to talk about. Oh, yeah. Now, one that I was not, I was not present for, but I would have loved to hear from. I would love to hear from someone who may have been there. I believe 1944, Louis Prima and Keeley Smith played mm -hmm. the Paramount Theater in Marion. Really. And the the accounts of that performance, uh, they talked about uh, people were lined clear around the courthouse square uh, for the performance. I don't know, there may have been more than one show, but but that people were actually dancing in the streets in front of the, the, the Paramount. Because, of course, if you know anything about, about Louis Prima, um, I'm sure the volume was such that it could be heard over that whole... Oh, yeah. <laughs> That whole in the town, but a, a, a true jazz classic. Yep. Um, and was it? That was another marriage made in heaven that ended in divorce. Yes, but, but great artist, two great musicians, and their and and the the big hit, sing sing sing. Mm -hmm. Great, great piece, great piece of music. Well, today I, I want to talk about um, Armistice Day, 1918, and uh, watching television the other day. I noticed on the news from uh, from England that all their politicians were wearing red paper flowers on their lapels. Uh, red poppies are seen everywhere in Britain, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand as part of Remembrance Day, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, 1918, the end of World War I, the war to end all wars. It had been a horrific, mechanized, brutal bloodbath lasting four years for the Europeans, with the U.S. entering the fray in the last year of the contest. I have not noticed red paper poppies being sold in recent years, um, nor have I seen any public figures wearing one. Uh, but the event 93 years ago was met with a tremendous outpouring of public celebration across the U.S. and in Marion, Indiana. News of the end of the hostilities came over the telegraph wire to the Marion Leader Tribune a little before 2 a.m. Marion policeman Ed Braden, who was in the newsroom at the time, leaned out the window and fired nine shots from his Colt revolver, which were answered by several of his colleagues patrolling the downtown area. <laughs> the steam whistle at the Marion Waterworks announced the confirmation of the armistice with a number of short blasts. According to the Leader Tribune, the courthouse square was filled with a crowd of people by 2.30 a.m. An impromptu parade of wagons, carriages, a few automobiles, a mile long, snaked its way through Marion, adding to the throng and to the noise. Every street leading to the courthouse was packed with celebrants. Sheriff Bert Fowler, um, who had a son in, in the uh, military during the war, uh, led the parade with the large courthouse flag. And uh, when he tired of marching around the square with that very large flag, he went to the balcony on the south side and waved it to the crowd who had lit the event with a huge bonfire in the middle of the street. The excitement continued for almost four hours. The largest parade, called Mammoth by the reporter, was led by Ed Caldwell, whose son was in the service. Mayor Alkina Hulley, uh, Soldiers Home Governor Crampton, uh, uh, came next. And then they were followed by uh, the veterans of the Civil War, dressed in blue. The G.A.R. Yes, and um, those that couldn't walk were carried through the streets. Um, behind them came the veterans of the Spanish-American War, and then the World War I men that were home on leave. After the Boy Scouts came 400 war mothers who, according to the paper, whose faces uh, were bathed in tears. 
The crowning event occurred when a local steeplejack scaled the courthouse in order to drape the Statue of Liberty on the top with a 100-foot red, white, and blue banner. I thought it was very interesting that the uh, paper contacted local octogenarian H.S. Kilgore, who recalled the end of those celebra uh, end of war celebrations in Marian history. Um, the Mexican War of 1848 was marked in local homes with prayer, the Civil War and the Spanish-American War with public festivities. But Kilgore stated that nothing I ever saw could ha hold a candle to today's celebration. I know that there will be some observance of the holiday. I noticed in this morning's paper a group will, um, will be putting lights out on graves at the, at the Veterans Hospital. In some schools, uh, perhaps in American Legion posts and VFWs, but there will be no grand outpouring of unity such, was such as was experienced in Marion in 1918. But perhaps someone will be selling paper poppies at the mall. If so, buy one, put it on, and remember the he heroic men and women who gave so much for us. Armistice, 1918. Very good. Who sold the paper poppies? Uh, the American Legion and the VFW. Okay. Um, it, and it's the the tradition started right after World mm -hmm. War One. And uh, you know, as a young person, I can remember. Well, my parents were active in the American Legion. I can remember it. That was sort of a young person's thing. You know, to 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 be stationed in front of stores with a little can. And I think it was in Indiana. The proceeds of the poppy sales went uh, to to uh, Knightstown Children's Home, which okay. was uh, okay. home for uh, war veterans, children. Bill, it's always good to have you here. Thanks for coming in. do want to remind you that we are going to talk some Veterans Day activity.